Oh no, it doesn't matter. I mean, you could use a nail gun. The reason I don't like nails, and this actually comes from a, a bit of a construction background I have, is that with enough tension torquing, anybody been on a deck that has nails with nails sticking out of the top of it? That's why you want to use screws, because any kind of tension and flex, nails will start to work loose. So, you'll see I have nails. That seems kind of backwards for what I just said, doesn't it? There is a reason. We are going to get into this. Okay, so what I'm doing is I am going to be overlapping these colors. Um, I'm going to be putting black on the outside, blue on the inside, and I'm actually going to kind of lead out. You'll see I've got the blue overhanging a little bit. The reason I'm doing that is because as it wraps, like a record player, it's going to, the, the inside one is going to be narrower than the outside. So, I've got some overlap. Now, the nails. How much overlap? This, this one you don't have to worry about because normally, like I said, I would use one sheet. Okay. This is just a custom thing that I'm doing. If you're doing two colors, play around with it, right? The thing about it is, you don't have to attach faults. You can just try them. You can, you can dry fit them and see if you like it, you know what I mean? So at the end, you'll kind of get to see what the overall look is going to be, right? So you're going to see that what I have is this sort of spread out, interspaced look, right? So you've got a mix in between. If I had done the blue and then wrapped the black around, I would have all black on the outside with the blue on the, on the inside. But obviously, because the black's going on the outside, you're going to have at least one layer of the black going up. Um, and like I said, it's a great question. In this particular case, I'm actually going to move it over a little less far because when I apply tension, I do actually want the blue to poke out a little because I actually want it half blue and half black. You'll see on the outside, one side's got black, one side's got blue. That's because when they wrapped around, the blue was poking out farther than the black, uh -huh. so you've got a, a layer of blue and then a layer of black. Okay. But that starts to get into some finicky stuff. If you're doing one layer, it doesn't matter. If you're doing like one strip of falls, just keep wrapping. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm trying to decide if I really want to, what's our time? Are we getting close to the end here? Maybe we'll get into knots, who knows? Eight. Eight? Uh, it's just before eight. Oh, good lord. Oh. Here come the knots. <laughs> she just got a woody. <laughs> See? All right. These are carpet tacks. The reason I use carpet tacks, even though I just said I don't use nails, is that I'm not actually using the carpet tacks to attach the faults. The reason I'm using the carpet tack is to actually apply tension, and that's a word I'm going to use until it dies, um, is that I'm going to be putting this through the leather and into the handle so I can apply tension on the falls as I'm wrapping it, because I want them to be as tight around the handle as I can. Um, obviously, because I'm holding the falls in one hand and turning it, I don't have a third hand or uh, tail to hold on to, so I need something to do that, and that's what I use the nail for. The reason I use carpet tacks is they've got a really nice wide head and a short nail. Why that's good is I don't have to pound the hell out of it and drive a nail all the way through the wood, and if you've ever worked with leather, if you put any tension on leather, it will split a hole and it'll come right over. Like if you use a thin head nail, it'll just pop right off. So you need something that's going to hold it down. So, let's see here. Yes, I should. Now the key here, here's the trick. You see that one's already put together, right? That one's, that one's all assembled. So the trick that I've got to do is knowing that my leather is a you know, living, breathing thing, is I've got to try and replicate what I've done on that one with this one. Good <laughs> luck to me. So, this is, you know, we're living the science here. Now, even though I only cut my hand on my, my uh, trim on my falls here a half an inch, we're actually going to go up three quarters of an inch on the handle to attach them. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, the closer it is to the bottom, the more torque there is, the more likely you are to lose it. Now, obviously, if that were the case, you could move them up three inches and they would be solid as a rock, but then you've got a knot that's this big, right? So I find that that's a really good balance uh, between the size I want for my knot and getting good traction on the handle. And where that comes from, I'll show you in a minute. So, I'm overlapping these slightly. Like I said, I want the blue to sort of lead because I'm wrapping. You don't have to worry about that part because that's just a thing for me. Okay. 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 So all I'm doing is measuring my three quarters of an inch. And I do have to admit that I alternate between inches and millimeters. 
just to piss people off. Oh my god, he's writing on the letter! Yeah, it's all cover up, right? That's one of the things that you have to realize, again, because it's cosmetic, is not, they're really just there to hide things. See that big ugly mass of tape? Who wants to look at that? Put a knot on it, it'll hide everything. It starts it. Yeah, ready. So all I've done is kind of given myself a mark because, again, it seems like common sense, but a lot of people don't think about it. If you don't actually mark it, when you start to go, if you don't have the leather wrap right, especially because we're gonna be gluing it, your knot will kind of like start up here and end down here, and it'll, it'll look funky. You want it level all the way around. So again, get this lead going on. And what I'm gonna do is line this up, and then I am going to pound a nail of this. And again, I am strictly doing this because I want tension on my falls when I'm wrapping. Period, end of discussion, that is all. Um, again, this is a process that occasionally requires liberal uses of four little words. Feel free to practice. Affect me at all. All right. Why don't you demonstrate that? So that's it. Fuck you. See? <laughs> practice makes perfect people. So now you can see it. That, all that is is an anchor. That's all that's there for is not really to hold the falls in. They're just to hold them in place while I am attaching. Now, out of range, we're going to use glue. You don't want to make a mess. Well, people use a mess. Yeah, this is a leather contact cement. Any craft store will have contact cement. If you've got either like a Michaels or Hobby Lobby anywhere handy, uh, they actually carry Tandy leather crafting supplies at a lot, and you can get contact cement. But really, any kind of good, like Gorilla Glue, will work. Just keep in mind that once you glue them, they're not coming off. This glue isn't so bad. You can actually kind of work with it a little bit. So all I'm doing is making sure that all of my falls, and this is a little bit more complicated because I've got two layers of falls to do just to make life a little more interesting. Oh, and the glue smells like hell. So you know. And again, I don't really want to bore people with this part of it, but what we're going to be doing is gluing wrapping till all of our falls and again you want to make a nice straight line and make sure that everything is overlapping and not going all kinds of sideways on and again the reason the nails in there is so you can get good tension on everything how long does the glue take to dry doesn't matter okay relevant and the reason I say that is because this is not the completed stage where it's going to be attached um, like I said I believe in overkill, a lot of people are like, well, oh, that seems like a lot. Don't want my floggers to break, period, end of discussion. I'm not, you know, there's nothing to talk about after that. Floggers do not fail. That is, that is sort of very embarrassing. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just, <laughs> now the thing is, to be fair, right, and I, I want to be very honest about this. If you're making your own toys, it's up to you, right? You can do whatever you want. But the fact of the matter is, I do sell these, and I don't want people to turn around and say, oh my God, I bought this flogger from you and it fell apart. Not going to happen, right? And if I've got a, like, you know, call in the National Guard to attach these things, that's what I'm going to do, because I want it to be well attached. That would be awesome. yeah. Now, do that? what you're going to notice is that, of course, I'm only on the blue here, so I'm going to get some, some blue on the black as well, so that it's all found together. Talk about doing it right. I found that a happy customer will tell two, an unhappy one will tell twenty. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Trust me. No, exactly. Well, and that's the thing, is you, you know, um, Anybody ever been up to the, the uh, vents of Louisville? Um, we've got a great play space there, right? Which makes cleanup a breeze. All right, and again, tape is our friend. Thanks. So what we're gonna do, uh, and I always do this, because the nail's in there, you can do this, right? Twist it. You want everything tight. And I, uh, I realize I say that a lot, I cannot stress it enough. You do not want any gaps, any space, anything like that going on. So now, as you can see, it's all just glued, basically, with the one nail holding the one side in. So now what I'm doing is just taping it down. Again, the tape is just to hold it in place for the next stage coming up. But it's not actually doing anything functional in terms of holding the falls on. 